I'm Adam Salati, and we're here live at the 2022 eClinical Works and Hilo National Conference for a very special edition of the eClinical Works podcast. Now, closing gaps in care is a key component of a simplified strategy towards population health. Now, capturing vitals and other indicators of health traditionally have been required the patient to be present in the office. But recent advances in technology and the creation of remote patient monitoring programs are demonstrating that for some patients, monitoring vitals only two to four times per year could in fact be a care gap that's been hiding in plain sight. Now, joining us to discuss the role of remote patient monitoring plays in his practice is Dr. Satish Joseph, Medical Director at Brookhaven Heart, a 20-provider multi-specialty practice offering cardiology and primary care uh, at services across multiple locations in New York State. Uh, now, Dr. Joseph has had the opportunity to work with us on the beta development of RPM, and we're very grateful to have his expertise and input there, and ultimately made the switch to eClinical Works remote patient monitoring module in March of 2022. Dr. Joseph, thank you so much for taking the time to speak Thanks with for us today. Me, Adam. So let's talk about the role of remote patient monitoring. Why is RPM so critical for your patients? Why is it so important? Well, as a society, we are not doing a great job in managing uh, many chronic conditions, especially high blood pressure. High blood pressure is one of the most prevalent chronic conditions. Unfortunately, uh, only about a quarter of patients with high blood pressure is controlled. And part of it is because of lack of enough data. So we end up seeing patients two or three times a year. We get two or three blood pressure readings. We are trying to manage blood pressure two or three readings. So many times when patients come to the office, they're nervous. We attribute their elevated blood pressure as, you know, white coat hypertension. And patients also go back and say that, you know, I had blood pressure elevated in the doctor's office. But when, when we in, engage the patient by giving a blood pressure monitor, getting more readings through their normal surroundings, when they realize that the readings are on the higher side, we get the buy-in from the patient. So we are able to detect more of this untreated, undiagnosed hypertension and take care of the patients. So the, especially in the uh, field of uh, chronic uh, care management as well as value-based care, it's important to identify these patients and treat the patient before they get into endorgan damage and comorbidities and higher cost of care from this. From the patient perspective, it's a great tool. So it's an added tool in the value-based space as well, remote patient monitoring. Now, I like what you mentioned there, you know, about the, the white, ho white coat hypertension, you know, often explaining away, you know, a high blood pressure in the office, but maybe really underneath that, it's actually underlying true hypertension that doesn't, that's not, uh, that's not noticed. Now, you, as we said, you uh, uh, switched to the ECW RPM module in 2022. Of course, you have a lot of experience with remote patient monitoring prior to that. But what, what impact has the remote patient monitoring uh, had on your practice? What, what is that, uh, sorry, what is the impact that it's having at your practice? So we are able to uh, get patients buy-in to take blood pressure medication or go on blood pressure medication to control the blood pressure better. So we are able to manage these patients better, number one. Number two is uh, we can spend more of our time on managing complex cardiac patients. So RPM is managed by our you know, support staff RNs and nurse practitioners, so our time is spent more on managing complex patients. So we get better outcomes from a patient standpoint of view, better, better readings, and our time can spend more on, on complex patients. And also, when we engage the patients on a periodic basis, we um, often see patients ending up in the hospital on less, less than prior, prior, prior to starting RPM. Uh, and what about uh, the number of visits, right? Uh, um, you know, you're a, primarily a cardiology practice. Uh, I'm, I'm presuming you're seeing most of your patients for, you know, blood pressure issues. What's that doing to the number of visits that you're seeing for the patients? The office patients, you know, patients who are on RPM, especially for high blood pressure, they, they don't come to office anymore. Most of these patients are managed remotely by the nurse practitioners. So the office schedule is spent, most of the time is spent on managing complex cardiac patients. So the... The, the treating high blood pressure by itself without any other comorbidities, this can be done most of the time remotely. We get much more data, much more engaged patients, much more better managed uh, patients also in terms of controlling high blood pressure. That's excellent. And it sounds like patients are probably more 
willing to participate in something like that because now they don't have to get in the car and come down to the office. They can just send the reading to you and you have better visibility you know, throughout that process as well so you can help to monitor that. That's excellent. So now you started using ECW's remote patient monitoring module earlier this year, but you were already familiar with the remote patient monitoring program prior to that. So can you share what you were doing prior to that switch in March? Yes, we were using a third-party platform a couple of years before we went to ECW. We found that uh, there was double enrollment. We had to enroll the patient in their platform, number one. Uh, uh, number two, identifying the patient for ECW platform is different. The way we had to identify the patient, enroll the patient, and uh, we have to select the device uh, platforms. They, they were had their own uh, blood pressure monitor. We had to get their device. And often it was limited by cuff size and choices. And it's more, it was more expensive as well. And, and the workflow, when we have patients who had to start treatment, we had to open ECW window and start treatment, document the conversation with the patient. So we had to open two windows and work. So workflow was somewhat challenging. And the billing part was, uh, you know, it was, billing was done through ECW. There was no billing component for that platform. We, so we found it uh, more, you know, unfavorable pricing as well. So after, uh, this was a limitation on that platform. And now that you've made that switch to the eClinical Works solution, what has your experience been since then? So enrollment is fairly straightforward. The, the uh, software identifies the patient based on the diagnosis as well as the insurance. So enrollment, we enroll the patients in the examination room itself. The providers enroll, the doctors enroll the patients. As, once the patient is enrolled, they go to the other side and uh, uh, either the medical assistant or nurses or nurse practitioners teach the patients how to um, start the program, downloads the app, trains them how to do the blood pressure monitor, educates the patients. And uh, uh, the workflow is fairly straightforward. The readings come to the ECW and sending medication through ECW is easy. For the billers at the end of the end of the month, uh, the CPT goes auto per place, so the, the workflow is pretty slick, actually. And uh, it's, it's favorable pricing as well, I must say. And another uh, advantage which I found uh, particularly was we could find uh, our, the device of our choice, and we bought device from Amazon. And we tried a few vendors, and we found the vendor which was, works best for us in terms of pricing as well as the accuracy of the readings. Excellent, and you can get them with two-day shipping, right? Two-day shipping, <laughs> one-day shipping. <laughs> Right. <clears throat> now, uh, what strategies are you using to successfully onboard those patients into the RPM program? So, first of all, we, we the physicians educate the patients in the examination room and we enroll the patient. And at the same day, we provide the blood pressure monitor to the patient, educate the patients about how to take the blood pressure. And uh, we give the patient a, a business card with a direct line where patients can reach us and there is an email also for RPM email. They can email us, they can call, call us. And there's a dedicated person who monitors the program on a daily basis to take care of the readings. Especially after enrolling the patient, the first few days we are much more engaged with the patients, making sure that we communicate to them uh, that uh, we get in the readings, we're reviewing the readings and, and counsel them and support them. And um, that's uh, another thing we do. Um, then the readings get you know, the, once patients realize that their, their blood pressure is better controlled and, and they, they stick with the program, and some of the patients, what we do is we give the blood pressure monitor as a loaner to the patient. They don't have to pay for it. They have to sign an agreement. So as long as they stay in the program, they can use it. And if they f end up the program, once the blood pressure is controlled, some patients keep it. They can buy the device for the same cost as we pay, or they return the device we use for another patient. That's excellent. It's great to hear that they're so enthusiastic about it. They want, they see the value. They want to, uh, to keep keep that device sometimes longer than the duration of the program. Now, uh, with where you stand today, uh, what are your plans for remote patient monitoring going forward? So we're adding uh, another device, a scale for managing heart failure patients. We are going to increase. Of course, the work workflow is much more easy now, so it's, it's straightforward. So we plan to. Right now, we have about 50 patients in the last. Last quarter we enrolled. We anticipate the program going to about 400 patients in the next six to 12 months' time. Excellent. That's a that's a huge yeah. jump for yeah. you over the next six to 12 there, months. There are so many patients who are undertreated and, and not properly managed when it comes to high blood pressure. As I mentioned, only a quarter of the patients with high blood pressure are treated and controlled. Quarter out of 120 million patients. There's a lot of opportunity out there for better care and for for practice. Bottom line. 
Excellent. Well, Dr. Joseph, thank you so much for taking the time to share your thoughts with us on the remote patient monitoring program. Thanks, thanks for having me, Adam. If you'd like to learn more about remote patient monitoring or any of the tools that eClinicalWorks offers, you can visit my.eclinicalworks.com or speak with your strategic account manager or find us at the ECW Central here at the National Conference. Don't forget to check out our other eClinicalWorks podcast episodes on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or my.eclinicalworks.com, and be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a conversation. For the eClinicalWorks podcast, I'm Adam Salati, and thanks for watching.